on the edge of the Atacama Desert in Chile, right near the Bolivian border. As you can see, it's very dry. In fact, it's one of the driest places on Earth. This is a great place to sort of get an idea what an extrasolar planet, for example, Gliese 581c might be like. Imagine that we're on Gliese 581C. It's an awful lot of rocks around. It's dry. The planet's mass is five times that of Earth. This means that gravity will pull twice as hard. Whereas on the moon, the astronauts could just jump with no effort. On this planet, you would, you would be suffering from extra gravity. So it would be sort of like you took a rock and you threw it, it would come crashing down much faster than that of the Earth. High gravity will affect the look of the planet. No mountains, just low hills and vast plains. And then the last thing is it's close to the parent star. And so the radiation from this, the sun would be much stronger than on Earth. So here we're getting burnt, but there we would probably be fried. The planet's red dwarf star will dominate the sky, a fiery ball five times larger than our own sun back home. And a few hours into their trip, interstellar visitors will discover that this sun never moves. The planet is so close to its star that immense gravitational forces have united the two. They're tidally locked, with the planet presenting just one face to the light. On the Earth, we're used to getting up in the morning, sun rises, we have our midday meal. In the evening, we have dinner, and if we're lucky, we get a nice sunset. But on something like Liesse 581c, it would be totally different. If I wanted to see the equivalent of a sunset, I'd be the one who would have to get in the car and move. Beyond this point is the dark side of the planet, perpetually turned outwards to the cold of space. I wouldn't want to live here. I wouldn't want to be a, a colonist in a, another world that was barren like this. I'd take a, even a year-long field trip but I'd, I wouldn't sign up for the rest of my life. 